Positioned at the crossroads of Africa, Asia and Europe, Egypt has long been a melting pot of peoples and cultures, making the question of Egyptian genetic origins both fascinating and complex. But what does the science really tell us about where the ancient Egyptians came from? And how have our understandings evolved with new research? A landmark study published in 2017 by Schoenemann and colleagues marked a turning point in our understanding. The research team extracted DNA from 151 mummies discovered at Abusir el Melek in Middle Egypt, spanning 1,300 years of ancient Egyptian history from the New Kingdom through the Ptolemaic and Roman periods. What they discovered was both illuminating and somewhat surprising to many. The genetic analysis revealed that ancient Egyptians shared more ancestry with Near Eastern populations than with present-day Egyptians, who have received additional sub-Saharan admixture in more recent times. The ancient Egyptian individuals from this study clustered genetically closer to Neolithic populations from Anatolia and the Eastern Mediterranean, as well as with Bronze Age populations from the Levant. Modern Egyptians, by comparison, were found to inherit 8% more ancestry from African ancestors than the mummies studied. This suggests a genetic continuity with Levantine and Anatolian peoples that predated even the conquest of Alexander the Great. This finding challenges certain popular narratives about ancient Egyptian origins. While some modern cultural depictions have portrayed ancient Egyptians as predominantly sub-Saharan African in origin, the genetic evidence suggests closer ties to peoples of the Near East. However, it's crucial to note that these findings come with important caveats. The samples were all from a single site in Middle Egypt and may not represent the genetic diversity across all of ancient Egypt, especially in regions closer to Nubia in the south. The genetic signature of ancient Egyptians reveals fascinating details through their Y-DNA paternal lineages and MT-DNA maternal lineages. Y-DNA studies have identified several predominant haplogroups among ancient Egyptian remains, with important implications for understanding population movements and cultural exchanges. Haplogroup J, particularly subclades J1 and J2, appears frequently in ancient Egyptian samples. This haplogroup is common throughout the Near East today, and is often associated with the spread of agriculture from the Fertile Crescent. Its presence in ancient Egypt supports the connection between Egyptian populations and those of the Levant and Mesopotamia, potentially reflecting migrations or cultural exchanges dating back to the Neolithic period. Another significant Y-DNA lineage found in ancient Egyptian samples is haplogroup E1. B1, B1, especially EM78 variants, which has deep roots in North African populations. The E1B1B1 haplogroup is thought to have originated in Northeast Africa and subsequently spread throughout parts of North Africa, the Horn of Africa, and the Near East. Its prevalence among ancient Egyptians suggests indigenous North African genetic components in the Egyptian gene pool, complementing the Near Eastern influences. The mtDNA profile of ancient Egyptians further enriches our understanding of their genetic heritage. Studies have identified a diverse range of mtDNA haplogroups in ancient Egyptian samples, including clades of J, U and H. In 2018, an intriguing discovery added another layer to this complex picture. DNA analysis of Jehutinakt, a no march from Upper Egypt's Middle Kingdom period, around 2000 BC, revealed that he belonged to mtDNA haplogroup U5B2B5, described by researchers as a European haplogroup. This finding hints at potentially more diverse genetic influences than previously recognised, though interpreting single samples requires caution. When discussing Egyptian genetic origins, it's crucial to recognise that ancient Egypt wasn't a monolithic entity, but exhibited regional genetic diversity. The genetic makeup of populations likely varied between Lower Egypt, the Northern Delta region, Middle Egypt, and Upper Egypt, the southern region bordering Nubia. Southern Egypt, particularly Upper Egypt and Nubia, likely had stronger genetic connections to populations further south in Africa. During the 25th dynasty, 744 to 656 BC, Egypt was ruled by Kushite pharaohs from Nubia, and some Nubian ancestry likely entered the Egyptian gene pool, especially in the south. However, even Nubian populations themselves had some West Eurasian ancestry from earlier population movements. The Delta region in Lower Egypt, meanwhile, was more exposed to Mediterranean and Near Eastern influences due to trade and migration. This region experienced multiple waves of settlement and conquest from various Mediterranean and Near Eastern peoples, 
including the Hyksos, Phoenicians, Greeks and Romans, potentially leading to greater genetic diversity. Another fascinating aspect of ancient Egyptian genetics is the remarkable stability observed over long periods. Despite foreign invasions and periods of outside rule, genetic analysis suggests that the genetics of the Abusir El Malek community did not undergo any major shifts during the 1,300 year time span studied by researchers. This genetic continuity spanning the New Kingdom through the Ptolemaic and Roman periods suggests limited gene flow from foreign rulers into the general population, at least in Middle Egypt. As mentioned earlier, the foundations of ancient Egyptian genetic heritage appear to be closely tied to the Neolithic Revolution and the spread of agricultural practices across North Africa and the Near East. Before the establishment of agriculture along the Nile, the Sahara was a very different environment. During the African humid period, roughly 10,000 to 5,000 BC, what is now desert was a green savanna dotted with lakes and supporting diverse wildlife. This green Sahara was home to pastoralist cultures that developed early megalithic structures and maintained connections to both North Africa and the Sahel region to the south. As the climate dried and the Sahara began to form, these pastoralist populations gradually migrated toward water sources, including the Nile Valley. This movement, particularly after 5000 BC, contributed additional layers to Egypt's early cultural and genetic diversity, potentially bringing Y-DNA-E lineages and MT-DNA-L haplogroups, more commonly associated with sub-Saharan populations. Ancient texts also provide fascinating, though often mythologized, perspectives on Egyptian origins that complement genetic and archaeological evidence. The Bible, as one of the most extensively preserved ancient texts mentioning Egypt, offers several relevant narratives about Egyptian origins and connections to other peoples of the ancient Near East. Egyptian texts themselves contain origin myths that blend historical elements with religious symbolism. The Egyptians conceived of their land as having emerged from the primordial waters of chaos at the beginning of creation. The linguistic evidence provides another crucial dimension for understanding Egyptian origins. The ancient Egyptian language belongs to the Afroasiatic, also called Hamito-Semitic, language family. A widespread group that includes Semitic languages such as Arabic, Hebrew and Akkadian. This linguistic classification places Egyptian within a broader family tree that spans North Africa, the Horn of Africa and the Middle East, suggesting deep historical connections between these regions. The debate about where the Proto-Afroasiatic language originated remains contentious, with some scholars arguing for an origin in Northeast Africa, particularly the Horn of Africa while others, especially specialists in Semitic and Egyptian studies, advocate for an origin in Western Asia. The Egyptian language shows particularly notable similarities with Semitic languages like Hebrew and Arabic. These include shared features such as a writing system that primarily represents consonants, a similar system of three basic vowels, the use of bi- and tri-consonantal roots for word formation, and the feminine suffix t to form feminine nouns and adjectives. Such linguistic parallels reinforce the genetic evidence suggesting close connections between ancient Egyptians and populations of the Levant and Near East. The sailing capabilities of ancient Egyptians were far more advanced than many modern observers might assume. While popular imagery often associates Egypt primarily with the desert and the Nile River, archaeological evidence reveals a civilization that developed sophisticated maritime technologies that allowed them to navigate both rivers and open seas. These seafaring activities not only facilitated trade and cultural exchange, but potentially influenced the genetic composition of Egyptian populations through contact with distant Mediterranean cultures. The material record of ancient Egyptian watercraft is remarkably diverse, spanning thousands of years and documenting a progressive technological evolution. From its earliest days, Egyptian society clearly relied on boats and maritime travel, with archaeologists discovering thousands of boat and ship representations and models dating from the Neolithic period onward, constituting the largest assemblage of Bronze Age watercraft in the ancient world. These finds provide concrete evidence of Egypt's maritime capabilities from prehistoric times. Among the most significant discoveries is the Khufu ship, an intact vessel over 140 feet long sealed in a pit beside the Great Pyramid of Giza around 2500 BC. This remarkably preserved ship reveals sophisticated woodworking techniques and was likely a ceremonial vessel meant to carry the pharaoh in the afterlife. Its construction features mortise and tenon joinery and cedar planking, 
demonstrating advanced shipbuilding knowledge during the Old Kingdom. Earlier evidence comes from the Abydos boats, dating to the First Dynasty, around 3000 BC. These wooden boats discovered in burial contexts illustrate a progression toward complex boat building technology, with distinctive features including edge-joined planks and an angled cross section. These characteristics appear consistently throughout later Egyptian shipbuilding, showing technological continuity over millennia. The discovery of ship timbers at Mersa Gawasis on the Red Sea coast has been particularly transformative for our understanding of Egyptian seafaring. Archaeologists found a chamber about 15 feet across, some 70 feet long, containing ship timbers, anchors, and other nautical equipment dating to around 1800 BC during the reign of Amenemhat III. This cave complex served as a staging area for maritime expeditions to distant lands, including the fabled land of Punt, demonstrating that Egyptians were capable of organising and executing long-distance sea voyages. Similar ship remains were found at Ain Sukhna, near Suez, likely supporting shorter voyages across the Gulf of Suez. These sites provide tangible evidence of Egyptian seafaring capabilities beyond artistic representations, confirming historical accounts of maritime expeditions during the Middle Kingdom. The technical aspects of Egyptian ships reveal distinctive construction methods suited to their environmental context. Ship parts preserved at Mersa Gawasis were more than a foot thick, with the archaeologists noting that one of the features of Egyptian architecture is overbuilding, suggesting safety features incorporated into naval architecture. As mentioned earlier, Egyptian ships also featured a unique design element. They were constructed with mortise and tenon joints that could be disassembled and reassembled without metal fasteners, facilitating transport across land when necessary. Maritime connections between Egypt and the Aegean world, Greece, Crete and the surrounding islands, represent another avenue for potential genetic exchange. Archaeological evidence demonstrates regular contact between these regions from at least the second millennium BC onward. Egyptian artifacts found in Aegean contexts and vice versa document this relationship. Minoan-style frescoes at Tel El Daba in the Nile Delta and Egyptian objects at Knossos in Crete provide material evidence of cross-cultural connections facilitated by maritime networks. These finds suggest the movement of not just goods, but potentially people as well. Pre-dynastic Egyptian cultures like the Badarian and Nakada show evidence of both indigenous development along the Nile and connections with surrounding regions. Early pottery, burial practices, and architectural styles reveal links to both Nubian cultures to the south and Levantine cultures to the northeast. Trade goods from Mesopotamia, the Levant, and Nubia have been found in pre-dynastic Egyptian sites, demonstrating early trade networks that facilitated cultural exchange. The introduction of wheat and barley agriculture, domesticated animals like sheep and goats, and certain technological innovations suggest connections with the Fertile Crescent during the Neolithic period. However, many distinctive aspects of Egyptian material culture, from religious concepts to artistic styles, appear to have developed indigenously along the Nile Valley, reflecting Egypt's unique environmental and social context. Among modern Egyptians, the Coptic Christian minority represents a community with potentially closer genetic links to ancient Egyptian populations. As descendants of Egypt's population who maintained a distinct religious and cultural identity, Copts have been the subject of genetic studies seeking to understand their relationship to ancient Egyptians. As mentioned very briefly earlier, one fascinating chapter in Egypt's genetic history involves the Hyksos, a group of foreign rulers who controlled parts of Egypt during the Second Intermediate Period. 1650 to 1550 BC. Originally thought to be invading conquerors, archaeological evidence now suggests they were more likely a gradual influx of Canaanite immigrants who eventually gained political power in the eastern Nile Delta. This period of Hyksos rule potentially introduced additional Levantine genetic elements into the Egyptian population, particularly in the northern Delta region. Some researchers have suggested that the genetic similarities between ancient Egyptians and Levantine populations might partially reflect this period of Hyksos influence. The Hyksos connection might explain why mummified remains of Egyptian nobility and royalty show Middle Eastern genetic lineages. However, the genetic continuity predating the Hyksos period suggests that connections with the Levant were already well established much earlier. Rather than supporting simplistic narratives about Egyptian origins, the genetic evidence reveals a nuanced picture of a civilization at the crossroads of continents.